What's up guys? Justin here with TheSketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp animation tutorial for you. So this video is continuing my series on different kinds of animations you can create inside of SketchUp. So ranging from using, uh, creating animations using native tools like in this tutorial all the way through creating complex moving animations with the extension animator and some other things in here as well. So all of the example files for this series will be available for download at the sketchupessentials.com slash animation. So if you want to follow along and see how all this is put together, make sure you go check that out there. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so um, we made a video. We already talked a little bit about using scenes inside of SketchUp in order to animate camera movements. So we've made a video about making a fly-through animation where your camera flies through a scene. Now what we want to do is we want to use section cuts in order to animate a construction animation inside of SketchUp. And so as a general rule, um, when we do this, what's going to happen is SketchUp has the ability to animate the transition between different section planes. So for example, you can see how right now if I add a section plane right here, then you can't see anything in this model um, because everything's been cut all the way through using this section plane. Um, if you were to right click on this and uncheck active cut, you can see how you have the section plane in here, but it's not actually doing anything. And so what we want to do is SketchUp has the ability when you add multiple section planes, so I'm just going to use the move tool in copy mode to create an a uh, copy here, it has the ability to animate the transition between those section planes. And so what that means is, let's say for example that we were to add a scene. So if we go to view, animation, add scene, and I'm going to go ahead and save this as a new style for right now, um, but let's say in scene one you had this section cut active. So if I was to right click on this and make this an active cut, and then I was to update this scene. Now every time, no matter what, even if I turn my section cuts off, if I fly around, whatever, if I click back on scene one, you can see how that, that section cut is going to be active in scene one. Well, one thing you might have noticed as my camera was flying back to this location is this actually animated the transition between your section cut being off and your section cut being on. And so you can also animate the transition between section cuts. So the way that that works is let's go ahead and right click on this and we're going to add a second scene. Well in the second scene what we want to do is we want to have this second cut active. So I'm just going to right click on this, make this one the active cut. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to update this scene. So now in scene two we have this section cut right here and it's going to be active but it's not actually cutting anything. Well, what that means is now if I move between the two scenes you can see how this is actually animating the transition between those scenes. So in scene one our section cut is fully active if we right click on this you can see how this is the action cut or the active cut. In scene two our second cut is active. And so what that means is that means that now um, this creates an animation. And you can export this as a video. And so if we use this, what we can do is we can actually set this up where we can create a full on construction animation. And so the way that that's going to work is we're going to use both layers and our outliner. And I will link to a video about the outliner down below. That's basically how we organize our SketchUp models. You can see how I've already done this for this model. So what I've done is I've taken this model and I've built it where every single one of these sections is in its own group. So you can see how I have the building skin in its own group so I can hide that. So you can see I have level one columns modeled as their own group. I have level two slab models as its own group. Each one of these has been made its own group inside of SketchUp. So basically what I've done is I've set this up so that we can animate the transition between these. And then I've also created a number of different layers. And so by creating the layers, what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to turn off layers that we don't want inside of each scene. So for example, you can see how right now, for my scene one to my scene two transition, my building skin is currently turned on. Well, what I want to do, and we're going to go ahead and label this scene eight. You don't necessarily, or scene nine dash building 
skin. You don't necessarily have to do this by scene, but I find it to be somewhat helpful to do that. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my building skin group on the building skin layer that I just created and I'm going to update these scenes so that all of those layers are turned off. So what that means is now if I update this scene so that my building skin is off in both of these scenes, well now this is going to animate the transition with the objects that are on. So you can see how what that does is that means that now instead of me just having a full building in here, I've now set this up where I can actually turn different parts of the building on and off. And so as a general rule, if you can get all of this done before you start creating scenes, it's going to make your life a lot easier. So what we want to do is real quick, I'm going to go through and I'm going to add each one of these groups to the different scenes or to the different scene layers. So I'm going to take this group, the roof slab group, and I'm going to put it on the roof slab layer. And I'm going to turn that layer off in a second. So I'm just going to go through and I'm going to organize the rest of these real quick and then we'll come through and we'll talk about what we do after that. And so you can see how now if you look at these groups, if you select them in the outliner, each one of them has that layer that I selected associated with it. What that means is now we can start creating our scenes in here where everything is turned off that we don't want. So for example, let's say instead of animating the transition between this and this, let's say we wanted our first scene to animate the transition of your columns on your first floor being built. So instead of doing a section plane that's standing up like we had it before, we would add a section plane right here. It's going to be straight up and down. And we can go ahead and we can move this up here. So we want one section plane where these are all shown. We want one section plane where none of them are shown. Because the first view that we want to, or the first scene that we want to create is going to be a section cut where everything is turned off. So let's go ahead and let's in our first scene turn off every layer except the level one column. So I'm just going to do a shift click to select all of these and I'm going to turn them off. So you can see how by organizing these by layers, this is really easy to do. And also if you create all of these ahead of time, if you plan ahead a little bit, this means you won't have to come back and update all of your different scenes if something gets messed up later. But what we want to do is we want to create our first scene where all of the layers except the level one columns are turned off. So I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to update that. Then we want our second scene to be the same. We want everything except the level one columns to be off because the only thing we want to animate here is the level one columns. So once we've done that, we're going to do one more thing. And that one more thing is in our first scene, the only thing that you can see from your model in this particular animation is the columns for level one. And I'm going to go ahead and center this real quick. And so what we want is we want our very first scene. We're going to right click on this active cut and we want this cut to be active. So in the first scene, we want our bottom cut to be active. And we're going to right click on here and we're going to update this. So in our second scene, we want this second cut to be active. So you can see how right now, if we don't do this, this is just kind of flying off into space because it's just animating this section cut turning off in general. Well, what we want in order to make this scene a little bit shorter um, and to make it a little bit more precise, we want this second section cut to be active in this scene. So what that means is in scene two, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull my previous camera location and update this. So now scene one. So scene one has all of your columns turned on and this cut active. Scene two has all of your columns turned on and it has your second section cut active. And so basically what we've done here is we've taken this and we've animated our first floor's construction occurring. And one thing you're probably going to want to do is within this, um, within your styles, you're probably going to want to take your styles and you're going to want to set them so that your section planes are turned off. So, and depending on what you like, you can turn your model axes on and off as well if you want them in here. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn those off. I'm just going to update this style. 
So you can see how now the style that we have selected, and we could even rename this if we wanted to, so we could call this animation style. And we could save this. Well, now the style you have selected animates this transition without you being able to see these section planes. And so now it's just a question of adding the rest of your scenes. So for scene two, for example, now, what we wanna do is we wanna add a new scene right here. And that second scene, and this is why you may not want to label these by scenes because I actually have an extra one in here that I wasn't planning on. Um, but what we're going to do in this situation, we're going to turn on our level two slab in scene three. And if you remember what we did before, and we can do this again, is we want to add a section plane cutting across this time instead of up and down. And under view, you may want to turn on section planes just while you're in here working on this. And I believe you can also put these section planes inside of the groups if you want to. In this case, I'm not going to do that. And so now we want to add our section cut for scene three. And so what we want our section cut for scene three to do is we want this section cut to animate this uh, this uh, slab coming across and being select or uh, being constructed. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a section plane. And the first thing you're going to notice, though, is we have a problem. And the problem is that section plane is cutting through all of our columns as well. That's because we have this section plane set so that it's in our overall model. We don't want to do that. What we want to do instead moving forward is we want to add these section planes inside of our groups. So within this level two slab group, that's where you want to place the section plane because you want to cut just the slab, not everything else. So you can see how what I'm doing is if I come in here and I add this uh, section cut right here, this section cut actually cuts across this slab. And so we've got this section cut in here it's active and we also have our level two slab layer turned on. And so we wanna update this scene with that section plane being active, but before we do that, we wanna make sure that we turn back off our section planes. So just like this. So then we wanna right click and we wanna update this. And so what we've done is now we have a scene one. So we have scene one where our columns get built. We have scene or scene one and two where our columns get built. But now the problem here is our scene three is actually animating this slab going away. And so this is a little bit tricky, but what we wanna do in this situation is we actually inside of, so in scene one, we have our first layer columns on, and then we're animating to the second section cut. So if we click on scene two, this animates this up. Well, what we wanna do in scene two is not only do we wanna animate this section plane moving up, we also wanna prepare our scene three. So right now, if we click on scene three, you can see how this animates that section cut actually turning on. So what we need to do is we need to set up scene two so it prepares us for scene three. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna turn our section planes back on inside of scene two. And then in scene two, we wanna turn on our level two slab. We wanna right click on this and we wanna make this an active cut. And then we wanna turn this back off. So, and you can see how you're getting this error message. Just click outside of this group and then turn this back off. Well now, if we update this, and you can't see it in the background, but what it's doing is in scene two, it's turning on that section cut, but the layer is off, so you can't actually see that transition. So now, when we go to scene three, we can animate the transition for this showing up. So the way that we wanna do that is inside of our level two slab, we wanna add a second section cut. Right here. And we wanna move that to this point. And we want that to be the active cut in scene three. So then we can turn off our section planes. So now, scene one, everything's off. Scene two, our columns animate. So scene two, 
the section cut inside of the slab is active and it's turned off. And then scene three, we turn on our slab level and we make this other section plane active. And so it seems really complicated, but once you practice with it a little bit, you kind of figure it out and you get everything set up the way that you want it. So now we're just gonna kind of stair step between our different uh, levels in order to finish out this um, in order to finish out this animation. So I'm gonna speed this part up and then we'll kind of talk through the way that everything looks when we're all done. All right, so now I've got all the scenes set up. So if I was to come in here and review animation and we were to play this animation, it would play the transitions between the different scenes. So one thing we're gonna to wanna to do with this is we're probably going to wanna set this so that there's not a pause, or maybe you like the pause, but sometimes you don't want a pause in between your different scenes. So in order to change that, we're just gonna to go to animation, settings and we can set this so that our scene transitions between our tabs are a little bit longer and then turn off the scene delay so basically what that means is that means that i don't want this to pause in between each scene so now if we were to do this again we were to play this it would start with scene one and it would just animate your different layers moving across or your different section planes moving across here and there may be a fair amount of trial and error that you need to do in order to get these scenes to work, but once you basically get them set up, it's just a question of making some adjustments in order to get this to do what you want. So you can see how now we've got this set up where all of our different slabs come across, and then finally we have our skin coming across our building. So once we've done that, all we're going to want to do is we're going to want to export that. So we're just going to go to File, Export, and we're going to want to go to the option for Animation and click on Video. And so when we click on our video, what we're going to want to do is you can come in here and you can adjust your resolution and your frame rate and all of that. But we basically just want to find our location and we just want to click on the button for export. And so in this situation, I'm going to overwrite what I already have in there. But basically what this is going to do is this is going to export every one of your frames and then stitch them together into a video. And so depending on the number of frames that you have in here, um, your video size is going to vary. If you go a bunch of ultra high resolution type stuff, your video files will probably be really large, where if they're a little smaller, your video styles will be a little smaller. So we'll let this run and then we'll come back and we'll take a look at what it produces. And so now, if you run the video that you've created, you can see how it's basically exported all of those different scenes into a single video so that you have a complete uninterrupted construction animation in here. And once you get the basics, you can really do whatever you want with this. You could make this a much more complex animation if you really wanted to. But once you understand the way that the section planes and all the different objects kind of interact with each other, then uh, you can use this to create whatever you want. So that's where I'm going to end this video. If you're looking for the example files for this, so you can kind of reverse engineer the process. You can download those at the sketchupessentials.com slash animation. So if you want to check that out, all the example files from this series will be contained there. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.